Awesome. Yeah, and uh, I 100% agree with you, Dimitri. We should start with uh, aligning on, you know, what is the what is the issue here? What is the problem? What are we trying to solve? Um, uh, looking back at our previous meeting, I was really trying to push us to have some. Um, uh, well, some clear outcomes of this of this session. Therefore, I went and I made some of the proposals for the agenda and I also created the mural board that I put here. So, yeah, I will just drop it there, but um, let's see, maybe uh, indeed we can give the word to Gregors first to start, uh, to give us a little bit of a background on uh, the technical side, if, if you had the possibility to figure out what are the possibilities there. Should we also drop into the mural board? Uh, because yeah. there is like a section for the technical part as well. We can fill it in so we see it more visual. Yeah, so uh, the, the problem is that I was off for the last couple of days because I was not feeling very well. So I couldn't spend too much time on uh, researching this, this topic. I, I managed to spend just a little time on that. So I, I might still lack some you know, vision and big picture of what the problem is and how we actually can use CI job token. But it's uh, quite evident that CI job token is one of many ways of in which we can communicate with GitLab. But it appears that is that the CI job token is indeed our area of focus right now and something that we want to take care of right now. And uh, I think that Jason actually updated the issue, or at least he was supposed to do that. So let me take a look at the issue again, and perhaps... He proposed uh, a new formulation. Was there another meeting between you and uh, Jason? Uh, again? Can you can re repeat the question? Because I'm not sure I heard. So you go I first, Nadia. Oh, yeah. I just mentioned that uh, Jason posted a proposal, updated proposal for the problem uh, definition. And actually, I copy pasted it into the mural. So this is the one here. Back to you, Dimitri. Okay. And, like, was there another meeting between you and Jason, Chegos? So I, 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 I uh, had a coffee chat with Jason and we had just spent uh, a, a few minutes on talking about that. So it was like not a call about this particular problem. But uh, I'm trying to read the description that Jason uh, updated. Yeah, okay, so uh, <clears throat> I think what we want to accomplish is this issue is that we want to uh, augment permissions for CI job token in a way that we can, that uh, project administrators can actually model permissions in a more flexible way and uh, the security is probably the outcome the, the, in, in, this, in this story. <clears throat> So I, I actually have one question that I, I hope that we'll be able to solve here is that where this should be configured and how to do that properly. And that's probably the, the, the only missing part of the story, uh, how to actually configure that and where. And we briefly discussed that during our last meeting. And, and I wonder if you have any thoughts about what can be done here uh, especially from the UX side. Mm -hmm. But first, before we even go, because again, we are dropping into the solution part and I just want to make sure. So does the problem that, uh, you know, the problem statement that Jason proposed, does it sound like that's the place where we should focus our powers right now? So uh, it sounds like we want to provide users a better way to, uh, to configure the user permissions. Um, and he proposed we should not break the existing permissions as well. Uh, so that sounds as a, as a problem that we are solving here. Or anyone has any details to add? Like, I would like us to have that clear some, somewhere, like, stated and written in big letters, and then we can dr uh, drop into the possible uh, solutions uh, discussion. Yeah, I don't have anything to add. Uh, I think that's the, that's the problem 
that we are trying to solve. That whenever uh, a GitLab runner communicates with GitLab by executing a user-provided script that is using a CI job token or ru the runner is using CI job token internally, um, when it communicates to GitLab, GitLab can use some configured values to decrease, uh, reduce the permissions of the user associated with the SCI job token to particular resources. And that's, that's probably exactly what we are trying to solve here. Awesome. So um, a question regarding that. So CI job token, does that have any relation towards um, a hierarchy in the in the system. So, is it instance based? Is it project based? Is it group based? Is it user based? Like, where is where does the CI job token live? Like, I'm trying to wrap my head around that. So, CI job token is associated with a user uh, during a pipeline creation or a build creation. So, it's actually a uh, a token that is associated with a build or a job and whenever a build gets created uh, a new token gets generated and a relationship between the token and the user that created build is created too so whenever a runner or a user script reaches gitlab with that token that is also exposed as an environment variable in the build context when, whenever this token is used, we are uh, using it to find a build and then uh, a user that created a build. And then this token impersonates the user that created a build. Is that uh, more clear now, Dimitri? Um, so we're going pretty fast here. I would like you to repeat everything you just said again. Okay, so... Um, Whenever a build or job, I'm using a build name instead of job because this is how uh, jobs are represented in the code, right? So we don't have a concept of a job in the Ruby and the Golang code base, but instead we are using a build. So for me, all the jobs are builds. So I'm, I'm using a build and that's the reason why I'm also referring to, to that as a build token. So whenever a build gets created, and uh, initially, its uh, its state is created. Only later, it migrates, transits to pending state, and running, and success or finish. So, whenever it gets created, before it it is actually picked by a runner, we generate a random token, uh, and we write it to the database. But also, when we create a we build, create a random token, and then then you lost me. Write it to the database. And you write it to the database, write it to the database, okay? And uh, when we write it to database, we also write an ID of a user that created a build. Okay, G give me a second before you continue. When we write to the database, we also associate it with a user? User ID, yeah, with a user, user ID. User ID. Okay, clear, thank you. Gregors, and you can uh, join the mural board, uh, board. This is where Dimitri is typing and you would see why he asks you to be slower a little bit. We're trying to uh, write down your, uh, your uh, information. You mean the yeah, agenda document, right? Uh, no, there is a mural uh, link uh, in the oh, agenda document. It is highlighted in the document. Okay, okay. Please jump in there because I see everyone is there except you. Okay. Thank you. Sign in. Okay, I provide my email. Can you skip that as well? I think you could also be, if you don't have a mural account, you can just, I think as a uh, edit, uh, enter as a guest. I can see how to enter this as a guest. Perhaps there are no permissions to do so. So, yeah, I don't see a way to enter this more as a guest. And Gini, I'll try to help you. I'll figure it out. I'll invite your email somehow. I hope. Did, you, did you share the anonymous link or the normal invite link? Question. Um, thanks, Mira, for Because anyone with oh, link, yeah. no signups required, needs to be edited. I dropped it into the chat, uh, Gregor, into the meeting chat, the link. Mm -hmm. Sorry, okay. you were right, Dimitri. It's now I posted the anonymous link. Okay. Yeah, it's it's been open. Enter anonymous. Enter. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. so something is here, so I will take a look later. I will take, uh, take a look in the meantime when I'm uh, explaining that. So, okay. So now we have this CI job token associated with a build and a user associated with the build. So the build is the entity that uh, holds the association, the relationship between a CI job token and a user. And as I told you, whenever a build gets created, this relationship is being persisted in the database. Now, we create a build whenever we create a pipeline but we create a build also when we retry a, pipe, a build. So someone can go to a failed build, click retry, and what's going to happen under the hood is that a, a new build is going to be created with a new association. So Dimitri can be an outer original pipeline, but I can go to the project and click retry, retry button if I have permissions to retry builds. And the, the new build is going to be created and CI job token is going to be associated with me instead of the Dimitri, who is the original author of a, an, an original pipeline. So uh, yeah, and then uh, the CI job token is going to be injected into the CI build context. So whenever GitHub runner picks a build, the CI job token is also passed to the runner so that the no runner knows what the CI job token is and it's uh, and the, the runner is using that CI job token internally for example to fetch pipeline to fetch repository right to, to fetch the code that the pipeline is going to be run for <clears throat> but it also exposes the CI job token in uh, environment variables So, so it fetches the code for the job and it then exposes the <laughs> CI job token uh, as an environment variable, right? So uh, whenever GitLab runner picks a build, the CI job token is transferred in the JSON payload that GitLab sends to a runner, right? So then GitLab runner takes the CI job token and it, using it, and it is using it for uh, <clears throat> a few things. Uh, fetching code from repository being one of them. And at the same time, the CI job token gets exposed as an environment variable. So that is available from within a script that has been written by the person creating GitLab CI YAML. Okay, is that So clear? the CI job token is the link between the runner and the user in order to fetch the right permissions. It, it, you, you can say it that way, I guess. <clears throat> um, okay, so if that is the case. So, so um, me, okay, please continue. And yeah, yeah one more question. question. Because currently, as we, like, as has been described within the issue, the CI job token is being limited in terms of what it can do in order to write back to the repository, right? because of security reasons. Like I can read it up for you if you want. Uh, let, let me do so that. This is something I, I wanted to check, but couldn't find time to do so because I was sick. And I'm not sure if a CI job token can be used to write a repository. This is something I'm, I'm missing and perhaps, and perhaps uh, I, 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 should, I should need to find an answer for that. But for me, it's like an, a detail in this story like whether a CI job token can be used to write to a repository or not, right? This, this is a detail and it's of course part of the story, but it's not the most important aspect of it. Okay. So I, I do not understand why this would not be important. I mean, it, it is probably important, but what is important is how we want to limit what CI job token can do and where to configure that. And, <clears throat> and uh, we definitely will need to create a table of what CI job token can do right now and how it's going to do it right now. And I probably know 80% of that and the remaining 20 time, 
20 percent is something I I failed to check because of being sick and I'm sorry for that. But uh, let me perhaps uh, finish explaining how it works because it's it's you know uh, having this full picture of how it works might help us to understand uh, all the details uh, of this issue. <clears throat> so once the CI build and CI runner have the CI job token that has been transferred in the JSON payload from GitLab to a runner. It's injected to the environment variables so that it's also available to a user, right? So a user who uh, designed the CI job script can assume that there is a CI job token variable that they can use to communicate with GitLab. GitLab runner is also using it internally to communicate to GitLab and as far as I know, it is only using that in a few cases. The one case is fetching code from repository, right? It, it's internally GitLab runner is using Git, I, I think, and uh, it's using CI job token as password. And GitLab itself needs to recognize that this is a CI job token. It's going to use that CI job token to find a build, and then it's going to find the user that created the build through the build itself, right? And uh, this is one way of uh, what CI, one, one thing that CI job token can do, it's uh, getting the code from GitLab. And then it's you're also using that CI job token uh, to set up web IDE, I think. Do, do you know what web IDE? Term, it's terminal ID, terminal console. I can't remember how the feature is called. It's not live on GitLab.com, but but it's also there. Uh, uh, there is, uh, you know, a way to actually access the context of CI job build, CI CI build from the GitLab. It's called uh, CI terminal, or something like that. But then it's you know. These things are kind of fixed. They are hard coded into GitLab Runner, and we know exactly what CI job token can be used for, and we can uh, we have control over how it's how the communication is happening, right? But then the CI job token is also exposed in the to the build itself, and a, a user who designed the script can take it and do whatever they want with it. They can use curl with CI job token. To communicate with GitLab, they can use Git with CI job token to communicate with GitLab. They can do many different things, and uh, then it, the CI job token is going to impersonate them. And probably what we want here is to decrease the access level of the user that we obtained through the relationship with the CI job token. So it's quite complex. So, <laughs> so I, I think I understand. So um, the CI job token impersonates the user, but so we want to, we want to be able to limit that, but also give access because currently it is being hard coded how limited this is. Yeah, it's, it's hard coded how limited it is. And, um, I'm not sure if it is in the scope of this issue to add more options, what CI job token can do. I think that this- One of the proposals of uh, Tim Rizzi actually, and if you look into this user feedback section on the right, um, where was this here? So if you see this one I'm highlighting, so this part was where uh, Tim Rizzi was coming in because they are, they need this um, uh, permission. Do you not know which one you are highlighting, uh, Nadia? Can you see it? Okay. <laughs> yes. Sorry, and let me make it black. I uh, know. For example, black. No, it doesn't work anyway. Oh my God, this tool is so bad. Um, so uh, Tim Rizzi, uh, one of his proposal was to like extend those permission to make them more granular and uh, they need that also for some of the work in the package registry, if I'm correct, uh, if I understood it correctly. Okay, so I think that it, it can be done, but probably not in the scope of this issue. So we, for every extension, we might need to have a separate issue 
but having this mechanism that allows you to limit what can be done with CI job token in place can make it actually easier to extend what can be done with CI job token in the first place, right? Because this way we can add, for example, give CI job token access to entire API, but tell GitLab that this CI job token cannot really write the API at all, for example. So with that in mind, what, what is the current permissions the CI job token has? Like if we would like make the permissions available of the CI job token, as it currently is by default hard coded configured, yes. what would those, what would those things be? Because those things will need to be represented in the eventual solution we're gonna uh, design for, right? I'm not sure I understand what you're asking about. Is your question generic in a way that what can be done with CI job token right now? No, I'm like, let's, let's take a step back. You said within the current MVC scope, we can probably not implement all these different uh, permission levels, right? I, I said that in the current MVC of that issue, we should not uh, add new workflows, new things that can be done with CI job token. Exactly, exactly. So if there is no new things to be added, what are the things it can already do? So things that it can already do is fetching code from repository, right? Uh, being used to communicate between the runner and web terminal and uh, it can be used to access a few endpoints in the API. Um, I, I think it can be also used to write to a few in endpoints in the API, like releases, I, I think, are the one. I'm not sure. Write the... endpoints in API? Read, like to some, read some endpoints and write to uh, some endpoints. That, what does that mean? Write that it can, you can use CI job token to, uh, for example, uh, post new GitLab release through the API. I, and I think it works that way. I, I would need to double check, of course. Again, I, I've, I have not done that yet, but it, it can do a few things like that. For in the some, some, some parts of the API, it can only read. In other parts of the API, it can read and write. And we do not have a lot of um, a lot of endpoints like that that CI job token can be used with. It, it's not available for entire API. We have a few endpoints, uh, you know, modifying in a way that they do support CI job token, but it's not globally supported in the API yet. All right, give, give me give me. Um... Just one second, I wanna check something with you. Mm -hmm. So currently when we look at um, like personal access tokens, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put in an image here. I'll put it here a little bit to the right. Is this being uploaded or not? I don't know, you, you need the more. Hey, yeah. It is, it is, I see. It. Yeah, in a mural. So if you click on my avatar, you will be transported to the place where I'm looking. Okay, I, I see, I see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what you can do with uh, personal access token, yes. So yeah, personal access. So how does the CI job token, which ones of these checkboxes does it currently check? Like I think API, is it both read and no. write or there, is read write more more granular as to like where exactly which ones so uh you can't answer this question it's not possible because for some parts of the api read user read api is checked for other parts of the api write repository uh, or write api is checked or the api is called actually uh, for uh, other things, nothing is checked. For registry, read registry might be checked and write registry might be checked. So it's, it, there, there's no clear answer to what, how, 
what permissions are set right now, because for different resources, different permissions are hard coded. And this is based on the user or on the part of the API you mentioned just now? You said for different users, the different resources, for different resources in the API. For different users, there are different resources. resources. No, no, for different users, not Check. necessarily. It's for different API endpoints, you can do different things with CI job token. So all the things are hard coded right now, and there is no this abstraction layer between, you know, uh, external communication and GitLab that will would allow us to apply this permissions model. I, I'm not sure how to explain. It. So um, let, let's let's view it from a different angle. What is what would be your like your happy path? In, in this sense, like if you would see this interface being created from your perspective, and I assume here, and this is just an assumption, so you can go anywhere else, is that it will have an interface similar as personal access tokens, where you can say, all right, I wanna allow CI job tokens to have access to this, this, and this, but not this, this, and this. Okay, what so would my, be in there? So my happy path would be going through code base and documenting all the things that you can do with CI job token then it would be devising the scopes based on what can be done currently with CI job token. And this is something that we are missing, like the complete list of everything that can be done with CI job token, right? And once we have uh, all the things that can be done with CI job token, we could create a configuration like that and enable everything by default on per user level. Currently, I don't see an easy way to introduce that on per project level, per group, per instance level. So, because a CI job token is also associated with a user, not with a project or instance. This is something we discussed previously, right? My happy path is adding a configuration and letting users to configure what CI job token with associated with, with their user ID can, can do. And perhaps this could be a start and then from there we could devise what can be done to extend it uh, to allow administrators to modify these things. So then after that is available, then you can allow for potential adjustments to these settings because they are based on a user but then they are set by an administrator for all users in, for example, certain group contexts or instance yes. contexts. Yes, but, but I think it would be easier to start from uh, making, it, making it configurable per user because currently this is how the association between a CI job token and a user looks like. So gotcha, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and this is exactly what we needed yeah and uh, right. <laughs> I, I like the way you even think in the iterations <laughs> which is uh well it's 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 important here as well right we don't want to jump in and provide a crazy a big uh, thing to deliver it's nice to think to what is the smallest part we could do here but i like this makes sense Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. Um, but then so it's the things than the ahead. the it's a little bit what I proposed is a little bit different than what is described in the issue, because Jason described uh, the situation in which administrators can configure something, and our solution uh, means that administrators won't be able to do anything just yet, but it's going to be users that can mm -hmm. actually reduce the scope of their tokens. And uh, um, 20 uh, cents from my side or five here, after a discussion with Jason, he mentioned that he and Camille, they have just like dropped something as a proposal. And he said, basically feel free to uh, put doubt and double check. Uh, looking into the data we have today from the customers, and by the way, uh, that would be maybe my first question, like Gregor's before, like have you seen all of those things? 
Uh, and I'm, uh, if you again, if you can point, uh, if you can click on me right now, you would be pointed to this user feedback section. If you have gone through that, um, because there is quite some information, quite some data from how customers like experiencing this today. I have uh, not seen that. I don't recall seeing that. Sorry. I don't recall reading that uh, user feedback. So maybe this would be also useful for you uh, uh, to go through that. I um, I uh, dragged the most, like the biggest insights that I thought are uh, scoped in multiple issues that are linked to this one um, and see if your opinion on the end solution will change in any way. And of course, let us know. Uh, but yeah, but from what I've read uh, and how I understood it from my not very, very super, super technical background, um, I think what you say, what you're saying, making sense, but I would love for you to go and double check with that. I, pl I placed a couple can of- Can you tell uh, me where, where the user feedback can be found? I'm not sure if this is uh, in, sorry, the it's here. It's in the Let me share my screen. It's in the mural um, yeah. here, so this section. Do you oh. see my screen right now? Yes, I can see that user feedback and how do I get it there? Um, and this is all posted, this is all copied oh, from okay. um, from the, if you go to the agenda, I made it this like user data to look into in the agenda and I copy paste it, well, not all, but most of the issues or Zendesk requests or sales for, sales for, Salesforce links that I don't have account personally, um, but all of this is kind of like is uh, FYI. Uh, like it will take you ten minutes to go over this all. It's to collect this a little bit more understanding of how people see uh, the problem in pink and what do they propose in green. So I broke it down for us like that. Maybe this will help us to push ourselves into a certain solution based on what people are proposing. Maybe you want to take uh, five minutes right now to go over that, uh, Gregor, and maybe you want to like vocalize that, what you're reading and you agree with that or not. Yes, of course. So what are you going over right now? Maybe think out loud with us. So this one, this one is very interesting. The first one. The first one, which is this, right? Yeah. Yeah, this one is the first one. Mm -hmm. And this this one is the second one. This is kind of like the greenest proposal from uh, the same person who wrote this as okay. a problem, and this is what he proposed. Well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this one I understand. So I, I feel like there are many different uh, problems described here and like all of them are impossible to be solved with just one issue and we probably should have like an epic for that rather than having just one issue about in, in improving pipeline permissions. Uh, because there are deploy token mentions mentioned here, there are private access token mentioned here, and there, there is a CI job token mentioned here as well. And uh, the truth is that uh, they are different problems. And I think for us, it's important to like uh, figure out which ones are related to the one we kind of like started from and see if that's still the biggest challenge here. And if so, like we can, you know, we can prioritize those different problems. Maybe we don't have to solve all of them, um, especially with this discussion, but it's, yeah. Um, this is where your, I guess, and Tao's opinion is really needed here as a, as a bit, uh, people who are having a bit more understanding what are we talking here about, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so, Actually, do, do you know which of the user feedbacks here is the most important to address? Is that 
something that you would have it's up to us to decide and i think of course uh, this is the prioritization question so this is maybe we can uh we can address this to tao as she is back um but yeah yeah do you see something so there there is the there's one most important problem for us to solve and it is uh the private like private access tokens are currently being misused um, and that creates a security problem. This is the main problem we're trying to fix. And I do think if we allow users um, to fix that problem, to not have to misuse personal access tokens um, and can use CI job tokens and allow those CI job tokens to do the same thing they previously used the personal access tokens for, then we are solving the main problem here. The rest are all edge cases or separate use cases. Can you explain me why the CI, uh, why the private access tokens are being misused? Because I think that's exactly the purpose of private access token. To like, um, yes, I can. Um, so let me see because I think Jason wrote that down exactly. Dimitri, can you also help me uh, figure out where, which, where, wh which of these problems you're pointing to? Like, uh, where is the personal token described in the user feedback board? Where is that? Where are you? I lost you. Uh, there. Like, I want to put this dot on it. Yeah. Sorry, I was on mute. Give me a second. I, I need two minutes and then I'll come back to you with all the answers. So the proposed problem definition that was given by, um, uh, by Jason, without going into solutionizing, because like solutionizing is like, hey, we want to create this interface that is accessible by admins to do whatever. Without going into that, it says, due to limitations on what the current CI job token is able to do, so that is an assumption there, but we're pretty, pretty accurate on that, most likely. In GitLab, the only way to perform several common important tasks that some pipelines need, typically like write destructive operations, like uploading a file, writing to its API, is to curl the API from the script section of a job using the user's personal access token saved as an environment variable. This is not a very secure um, way of doing things because the access token might, may have more permissions than are needed. And it is fragile because it's dependent on that user. So the CI job token will get used by other people than those are, that are triggering the pipeline. Because the, the people that trigger the pipeline, yes, those trigger the pipeline, but the pipeline then does another thing that is triggered with the personal access token. Okay, now I understand exactly what we want to solve here. And uh, in order for you to understand that, you are probably missing one important information about what is the difference between a CI job token and personal access token. And what's the difference in the security? So now, the difference is that CI job token is only valid as long as a CI build is running. It's created when a build is created and when it is complete, it's revoked in some way. Of course, it might be valid for a more couple, couple of things more. It depends on many different things, but that's the core difference. That CI job token gets revoked and invalidated after the build transits to a finished state, whether it's failed, success, canceled, or something like that. And that's probably yeah. the problem with uh, personal access tokens, that they are long-lived. You create them, you can set when a personal access token gets revoked, but... Yeah, but um, aside from that, you configure the personal access token as a static environment as variable to be used not only by you, but by anyone that triggers the pipeline configuration. Yeah, because the environment yeah. variable is set from a project point of view, not a user point of view, right? Yeah, so that that's another point. So indeed, it seems that what we might need here is uh, an ephemeral access token that you can inject into the build based on who created it. 
And now I'm not completely sure if it's the most simple way to reuse the iJob token for that, or perhaps a new type of token should be created. But I completely agree that this is something that we should solve. And that, that's, uh, and thank you very much for pointing me to this feedback because it's now, everything is a little more clear. Uh, tied to the user that triggered the pipeline. To begin with, yeah, exactly. So if if we take that in mind, right, um, we're gonna allow for that CI job token to, because it currently does not have enough permissions on purpose. And what exactly those permissions are, you still need to find out and choose if you stated before, because there's a lot of things throughout the code base that it can do and cannot, but like what I see as a, um, as a, like there's the main problem of the personal access token being used. And then as a sub, like that personal access token is being used for a variety of use cases. Then we can choose in those use cases, which one we want to support right off the bat. And then the other ones we can, um, we can support in separate, follow-up iterations, um, adding more permissions to be configurable. That is correct, right? Yeah, uh, I think it's uh, probably a technical decision whether we want to use reuse, whether we want to reuse CI job token on, or create something like CI access token or CI user access token, right? It, it would be different. So it's uh, probably a matter of checking what's easier to achieve because refactoring every place where we actually see a job token might be quite difficult but on the other hand having yet another token might be might introduce some amount of complexity that we want to, we don't want to introduce so uh so i think that we are aligned that the problem that we are trying to solve here is to build a replacement for a personal access token that can be used uh, in a uh, CI build. Uh, I mean, that is what the CI job token is, right? It is like, it is connected with the user ID. It will use the user ID permissions, but then it is further halted by whatever the CI job token is limited to, which is hard coded in the code. That is what we're gonna expose as far as I am understanding this problem space. Yeah, so CI job token might be actually a good fit for that, but it depends on a few technical aspects that I won't delve into right now. But uh, yeah, so uh, I, I think that we actually know what, what the problem is. So that's, that's a huge progress. Um, let me see. So the, so the direction to go for CI job token permissions like to expose those permissions and make them configurable. It depends on technical, like some technical things that we need to find out. So currently CI job token can be used in only a few places, right? And in order to make CI job token a replacement of personal access token, we would need to do a lot of things, right? Um, sorry, like I'm, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent following. So uh, like, please explain to me what you like, where you make the difference between, ah, oh, this is what a, what a personal access token can do. And it will be used in, you know, a variety of, of ways, but CI job token can never touch that because of X. I'm, I'm not sure what that X is. The X is that currently it's not supported and it's simple as that because uh, CI job token never had this uh, possibility of configuring scopes. We decided not to add support for it in most of the place. So it can be used with the API. It can be used with a couple of other resources. And uh, I think that the first step is to understand clearly what's the difference between uh, what can be done with CI job token and CI access token and would, what would be the effort to align the two because we want to make 
a CI job Sorry, token. personal access token or CI job? Like, I, what is the terminology you use exactly to be sure? What's the difference between personal access token and CI okay. job token, right? Because we want to make a CI job token a replacement for personal access token so that people do not need to use personal access tokens, but instead they can use a short living CI job token and then still configure the scopes for it and stuff like that, right? Uh, yes, that's how I understand it as well. Okay. But the the point being is like there's there's step one is in terms of like we wanna we wanna um, a lot like we both need to expose what a CI job token can currently do, and then we need to support one of the use cases that we're trying to fix so that the job token can indeed be extended to be used for that use case. Yeah, that's one way. And the second way is to fix personal access tokens, right? Because we can also build a feature that will basically inject your personal access token with a specific name into the context of CI build. So other people, you know, other pipelines do get a different token, for example. And then we can also set some expiration uh, rules and uh, revoke that token or uh, hash it in some way that uh, it, it's not really uh, visible in a way that would allow people to uh, obtain it and to use. So uh, th there are probably uh, a bunch of solutions, but I, I guess that the first thing to understand is what's the effort of aligning the CI job token with personal access token? Because if it's so huge that it would require a rewrite of some parts of code base. Perhaps we can leave the CI job token as it is right now and uh, devise the solution uh, uh, based on reworking, uh, you know, uh, personal access tokens in some way. But this yeah, is- a I agree there. So like, so you would have like a, a sort of like common variable that would like, call for a personal access token to be injected dynamically? For example, something like that. Like there, there are a bunch of solutions. Well, what can we do to make personal access token more secure? So it's a matter of finding the right balance between the complexity of uh, refactoring CI job tokens versus complexity of augmenting personal access tokens, right? So this is more like a technical decision than, uh, you know, uh, product like than you know design or ux for example you, you mean you understand what i mean i right? to be to be honest like i i agree and disagree at the same time because okay, um if we're gonna extend personal access tokens then there is the consideration there um what kind of difference that makes towards the workflow to setting up uh the solution for the use cases mentioned so if the user is currently using a personal access token, we're gonna extend upon the personal access token to allow for X to be possible, then how does that influence the workflow? Um, but I do say at the same time, and I agree with you, like first up, we need to understand what the technical scope involved in either one of those directions is. After that, UX will come into play. Yeah. So that's that's interesting, and I think I I, um, uh, I will definitely spend some time. And this time I'm going to uh, prioritize this, and I hope not to get sick again. Uh, to research that issue a little bit more. And uh, so it's also a matter of understanding what users are using the personal access token for. If it's only a matter of adding CI job token to the API, it's probably a good idea to rework the CI job token. And this way uh, we will be able to add configuration options for scopes. What can we be done with CI job token on the API, right? And uh, it, it wouldn't be a huge refactoring or redesign of the CI job token. But if users are using personal access tokens for something else, like we also need to understand that. So I'm, I'm going to spend some time researching what the, what can be done with personal access token, what can be done with CI job token, and how difficult it would be to align 
CI job token with personal token in the regard of doing the same thing and then making CI job token configurable as the personal access token while keeping this important feature of revoking a CI job token after every, every build run and making it ephemeral and different for every user, right? So I think okay. from now on, it's more like a technical research. And I, I propose to reschedule this call, uh, like to schedule this again uh, in a week from now. And this time I, I will have all the information we might need to actually uh, come with a design or discussion that uh, might be needed before we come with one. The next time it's gonna be more solution driven discussion then. Yes, then what the, is the problem? That we are, I think that this meeting was very productive and we now, all know what, what the problem was. I created a, a section here for the next steps. So the, as you said, um, uh, Gregor, uh, so what uh, we need to figure out what could be done with the personal access token, what could be done with the CI job token, and then what's easier to update from the technical side. Yes. And then schedule a meeting for the next week to align in the... Um, yes. Anything and, else? Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, correct. And uh, I also plan to update the issue so that uh, it's uh, written in a more simple way what the problem is based on what we discussed today, unless someone of you want to, you know, want, want, want to do that. I think you're the best. Well, definitely not me. <laughs> I know you're Dimitri, probably the best people to do that. Um, and thanks a lot. I think that's a great proposal. I think we can say that, hey, we had a uh, meeting with all of us uh, to align on the problem. And this is what we think the problem is. And tagging Jason and Tao and see, hey, do you agree or not? But it sounds like, uh, indeed, the discussion was pretty productive. So Yeah. So definitely, uh, I agree with start, start with understanding the problem. And uh, I, I feel like we now understand what the problem is. I will write the summary in the issue and ping you there. And uh, yeah. Thanks a lot. Dimitri, you're adding something for the product research still. Yeah, so there's one more step, but I think it needs to wait for the technical research uh, because after that, we'll have more information to decide direction upon. But like, we understand the problem space that, you know, personal access tokens are currently being misused. But then if we want to extend and there's additional uh, effort involved in supporting those use cases, um, then we need to decide on, all right, which use case do we want to support first? But this is going to be next step. Perhaps the use case is the replacement of CI access of uh, personal access tokens, like the, allowing users to do everything they used to do with personal access tokens injected into the, the build context using secret variables and uh, making it possible to achieve the same with an ephemeral token. So that that feels like a good you know use case yeah let's uh let's, that sounds good uh let's uh, let's roll back to that next time and then uh we have more information to to fuel our our conversations but thanks for this explanation uh it really like when we were talking about the happy path that kind of like lighted up exactly what i was thinking like all right in terms of ci job token that is if we go for that direction then the other one, which I also found very interesting, is like, hey, we can go a totally different path, which is, you know, extending the personal access token to be used in some way that it doesn't um, create that, that security problem, but also allow for um, additional configurability for permissions. Yeah. So there's these two directions we want to explore, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that uh, the heavy path uh, might be also interesting because if it's only a matter of adding a full support for the API to CI job token, uh, then uh, it might be actually quite simple to extend uh, the API access in the next iteration, the first one being exactly the happy path, path that we described. 
Anyway, let, let me do some research yeah. and write summary in the issue. And uh, I think that my brain is al already drained from all the things. Thanks a lot. Yeah, and the time to finish this meeting in, indeed. Uh, thanks for a great discussion. I'll also upload this meeting to the um, CI channel. And yeah, uh, thanks for writing the summary, updating the uh, issue uh, after this. Thanks all. Uh, let's meet up next week. I'll schedule a follow up for this in inviting Tao. The same time, right? Same time. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully that works for Tao. We can probably do it later, so it might be more like not that early morning for her. I will chat with her, whatever works. Okay. But I'll, yeah, uh, I'll take uh, that task. Okay, thank you very much. Have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye -bye. Thank you so much.